Welcome back. This is Dr. Jun Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to do a real life case study on Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel disease. This is a patient that we are actively taking care of in our office. So let's get right into the details. <clears throat> when he was 17 years old, he noticed back in January 2020, perianal abscess or fissures. Took him to the doctors and they found that he had abscesses, they had it drained, and they did a seating procedure to keep the abscess uh, continually draining. 428-2020, finally got to see the specialist. They did a C anchor test, which was positive, which confirms the diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. He was also borderline iron anemic. In 2020, they did a CT scan, MRI scan, colonoscopy, rounds of antibiotics to make sure there's no infection, along with steroids. No real change in symptomatology, which is abdominal cramping, pain, etc. And the abscesses were still there. <clears throat> August 2020 presents to my office. We put him on a very strict autoimmune paleo diet, or AIP diet which is basically free of gluten, dairy, soy, nightshades, and lectins. We also recommend supplements. Now, this is a 17-year-old male. He was very strict with supplementation. He didn't have any problem with that. The problem was that the AIP diet was very restrictive, and he had continual exposures, maybe once or twice a week, with gluten, dairy, soy, sometimes lectins, etc. So he had continual exposure to inflammatory foods. We lose track of him for a little bit. <clears throat> and then January 2021, he starts Antivio, which is a biological drug, right? To help the immune system or suppress the immune system. 621, CRP or C-reactive protein which is an inflammatory marker for general inflammation, was at 20. Most cardiologists would like to see that number below 1. They check his blood and they say his antivio levels are not at the right level, so they increase antivio at that time. <clears throat> January 22, he's iron deficient and he has lots of inflammation going on, 48.1 double the amount six months ago. Finally, he comes to see us sometime late December. We run a stool analysis, and the stool analysis shows H. pylori, occult blood, right? We did a fit test, and it was 54, should be below 10. We check for inflammatory markers in his GI tract called calprotectant, greater than 3,000. One of the highest numbers I've seen. It should be below 173, right? We have massive, massive inflammation going on between CRP and calprotectant. Okay? So he finally comes to see us. And we say, we found these things in our stool analysis. And we sit down, we have a very stern talk. Why? Because initially he did not follow the AIP diet. So the second time around, it's a very stern talk, right? My voice rises a little bit during the consult. Um, the parents have to be 100% on board because now he's in college. The child or, or young man now needs to be absolutely 100% on the autoimmune paleo diet. So we have this long conversation about the importance Right? If he doesn't do what we ask him to do, it will lead down the road of chronic health issues, iron deficiency, nutrient deficiency, and possibly bowel resection. Okay? So he agrees to do a strict autoimmune paleo diet. We put on, on gut repair, meaning nutrients that are gut um, <clears throat> healing. There are powders that are available six times a day, probiotics, six times a day, curcumin, six times a day, 
vitamin D 5,000 units with vitamin K2, zinc carnosine, EPA, DHA of 2,000 milligrams. High dose nutrients along with a very, very strict diet. So January 2022, iron deficiency CRP of 48.1. After we start our protocol, Okay. With the diet and nutrition combined, approximately two weeks after we check CRP. In February 2022, CRP was 2.7. Now, this is a very rapid result. It's one of the <clears throat> oddities. Usually it takes three, six months or a year before we can get patients down to these types of numbers from the levels that he was at. However, for this patient, it was likely that he was reacting to certain foods that causes inflammation. And eliminating those foods made a profound impact on his health. His inflammatory load went way, way, way down. Now, it's two weeks into the program and we're not out of the woods. In two weeks, we're gonna check it again. We're gonna check CRP. We're going to check to see if you have iron deficiency. We're going to check ferritin, RBC, hemoglobin, hematocrit, right? Red cell distribution. We're going to check all those things to make sure that he's no longer bleeding in his GI tract. We want to know that he's absorbing his nutrients. So <clears throat> CRP in, is 2.7. Check in two weeks. In another four weeks, we're going to check calprotectin. We want to see that number below 173. It takes time, but finally, the, this young man has decided that his health is important, right? The impact of diet and nutrition has finally gotten through to him, saying that I don't want to live a life where I'm going to be debilitated and fatigued and, and kind of a miserable life. He wanted to make a change. And finally, with the support of loving parents, he's able to come out of this. Okay, it, this is a great case study because food and, and diet and nutrition can make a profound impact on chronic inflammatory problems. This is part two of the case study, so I'll link part one at the end of the video. So let's get right into it. So we had that patient when he was 17 was diagnosed with Crohn's. And by the time he got to me, he was 19 years old. January 2022, his CRP or inflammatory marker was 48.1. We want to see that below one. In February, after being on a strict diet with nutritional protocols, two weeks after starting, his CRP went down to 2.7. Okay, When we found out he has 2.7, what we did was uh, we changed his protocol. So we went to gut repair four times a day, curcumin four times a day, vitamin D, K, uh, zinc, and EPA, DHA. We rechecked after doing this protocol and on February 28th, 2022. His CRP went from 2.7 to 1.25. So we're getting very close to ideal numbers for his inflammatory markers. We also checked total IgA and IgG immunoglobulins because we want to do some food sensitivity testing for this patient. Uh, they are on a very strict diet, so we want to be able to add in some foods for this patient. So we want to check total IgG and IgA, which were within normal reference ranges. So we're going to go ahead and do a food sensitivity test for this patient at this point. Additional markers on that blood test showed low iron at 25, uh, iron saturation was at 6, this is the range 15 to 55, ferritin was at 7, 16 to 124 is normal range. Red blood cell was normal, but hemoglobin, hematocrit, MCH, MCHC were all low. Okay. Now, I knew this patient was iron anemic even before we started our protocols. So why didn't I supplement iron in the very beginning? So let me explain how this works. One, he's not absorbing iron uh, very well. 
and two, when he came in, he still had a small, probably GI bleed, which was confirmed on our stool pathology testing, where his fit test uh, showed blood. So one, he was um, losing blood, and two, he was highly inflamed. So when you're highly inflamed, you produce hydrogen peroxide. As a, uh, when this tissue is damaged and there's inflammatory processes going on, you have something called hydrogen per peroxide that's produced. Now, if you add iron to hydrogen peroxide, you're gonna get something called the Fenton reaction. Okay, and it, this doesn't happen to every patient, but in some patients, you're gonna have a Fenton reaction. What that means is that iron will react with hydrogen peroxide, and you're gonna get a hydroxyl free radical, or what we call a react reactive oxygen species. When you have elevation of reactive oxygen species, what you're going to do is create more damage. You're gonna damage more tissues, not just in the GI tract, but in other areas. So in order to prevent the Fenton reaction or the possibility of a Fenton reaction, we avoided using iron until we got his levels, uh, his inflammatory markers down into the more normal ranges. So we were able to do that. So that's my rationale as to why I did not supplement a patient with iron in the initial phases, even though he was iron anemic because he had inflammatory processes still going on. Now, what are our next steps? So our clinical thought process is we want to add more foods. So adding foods is an important factor for this patient uh, because we're on a very strict, what we call autoimmune paleo diet. So what we want to do is we're going to check for food reactions. We're going to do an IgG, IgA testing through Cyrex labs, and we want to see if gluten alternatives are going to be safe for him. So remember, I did an IgG and IgA total in the blood work to see if he's going to have a proper immune response to any foods that he's going to be sensitive to. Now we're going to do the food test through Cyrex Labs. Cyrex. We're going to continue to monitor his CRP and his iron markers over the next four weeks. And then at this point, we're going to add vitamin C, ferrous bisglycinate chelate, which is iron, and betaine hydrochloric acid. So at this point, we're adding iron, and then we're doing some food sensitivity testing, and then we're going to do some follow-up labs to see if his iron deficiency will improve. On another note, he had two follow-ups uh, with the specialist, right? Uh, the Seton uh, apparatus or procedure that was done was removed on his last visit, which was this past week. The doctor who removed it said his inflammatory bowel issues are pretty much gone. He doesn't see any damage there, and it was removed. He went to see his gastroenterologist also and showed them the blood work that we did for him. And at this point, he's able to get off of his medication Antivio. So basically they stopped Antivio. Um, inflammatory bowel or Crohn's disease is in remission at this point, but we still have some work to do, right? We want to get this patient to optimal health, not just feeling better, but we want to get them to an optimal level and we want to start adding foods so that his quality of life will start to improve. So basically we took a patient in about four weeks needing uh, Antivio and needing uh, additional visits to specialists and doing MRI follow-ups and all these testing. And we were able to turn his life around in about four weeks. Now, this is a case that where uh, the results were very rapid, right? Not all cases go this way. Most cases take about four to six months, up to a year. So you have to be patient. Not everyone's going to re uh, improve in the first two weeks. So you want to be patient with your protocols and stick to your recommendations that your provider makes for you. Uh, and you really should need guidance. You can't go ahead and tackle this type of chronic inflammatory processes on your own. So you need a good provider to handle that for you. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results.
and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.